Hey friends, good to see you today. <clears throat> Yesterday I posted a video, it's about a year old, and one of those reminders Facebook sends up, and it was about um, the new covenant and the fact at the end that the new covenant, uh, of the new covenant statement in Hebrews chapter 8, that the Father said, I will have mercy on your transgressions, and I'll remember your sins no more. And I went on to just sort of assure everybody that that, that is in fact true. And uh, I got a precious question back from a friend that read it or that watched the video and said this, hello there. If God doesn't remember our sins, whether big or small, then why do we feel such guilt forever, even about the smallest things? From saying a bad word to not forgiving people for things they've done or said to you or those that you love. It seems if God forgets, that should give us peace. I know we never forget, but wow, shouldn't it get easier to handle? Yes, is the answer. <laughs> yes, is the answer. So I, I was praying a lot about this, and I want to talk to you about it just for a few minutes. I'm going to appeal to some insights that we gain from John in 1 John chapter 3 is where I'm going to start. So let me read a passage of Scripture, but let me set it up by just saying, yes, the fact that God has not only forgiven us, but cleansed us from all sin in that sense, or is in the process of doing that for sure. The fact that he has promised in his new covenant that he is going to greet our transgressions with mercy and remember our sins no more, that should change. It should actually define how we think about our sins. We should be able to come easily and aggressively. And I'm, I'm not saying that when you do something you know you're not supposed to do, or especially if it's a repeat kind of thing that you didn't even know you still had a problem with, that it's not going to be embarrassing. It's not going to be awkward. But Jesus died so that you and I could approach the Father forgiven and, and partake of that cleansing and, and that mercy. Uh, another spot in Hebrews says that let us come boldly before the throne of God to find mercy and get grace to help in time of need. So this is all throughout the scripture. This is the covenant that we live in. But why don't we get the benefit of that? And I think the question is really germane. I know a lot of people feel it. So let me just briefly go through this. It's only going to be a couple more, maybe about four more minutes or something. It says, little children, let us love with word or tongue, not with just word or tongue, but in deed and truth. We will know by this that we are of the truth and we'll assure our hearts before him. Okay, so there I think is the direct answer to the question of why uh, why it doesn't have an impact on us, but how we can help it have an impact. So there's two things I want you to, to look at in that verse, and this is 3 verse uh, 18, 1 John 3 verse 18. It says, first of all, that if we love, not just with word, but in, in deed and in truth, then we will know by this that we are, and the phrase is really simple in the Bible, it says, of the truth. And I know that we have a chance to interpret that a number of ways. And probably the most common way would be that we're in the company of people who are uh, believing the truth. And that's, that's an okay way to interpret it, but it doesn't really carry the full impact of, of what's being said here. The, uh, the words in this thing start with the, the pronoun ek. And ek means to come out from a place. To, uh, to come out and there's a source. There's a source that you're beginning in and you're moving out. So when John says here that when we love in word and deed and in, uh, uh, you know, not just with word only, that we will know that we are out from God. We come from him. He's our God. We're made in his image. And, and in the New Testament context that we're redeemed and drawn into his heart. So, our source, our origin is out from God. This is the first problem and why a lot of times I think we have a hard time believing that we're forgiven and that God can forget our sins is because we have been steeped in a teaching that says we're out from Adam and we're out from the fall. We're out from a depraved person. Well, there's no question that Adam is in our line, but that line has been taken over. It has been usurped, if you will, by the second Adam, Jesus Christ. And so when, when you and I are in Christ, we are literally out from that line of DNA. Uh, what, what we gained, or technically what we lost, 
in Adam, we have regained in Christ. So John says here in real simple terms that we will know that we are out from the truth, out of the truth, that we come from the truth. So our most basic nature now is not the sin that we are confessing and that's hanging on to us. Our most basic name is that we're from God. We're out from him. Then it goes on to say this, and we'll assure our hearts before him. Two things I want to point out here in answer to this question of why, if God forgives our sins and forgets them, why do they still hang on us? Because one, we aren't used to thinking of being out from God with God as our father and God as our source. And second, we don't know how to persuade our hearts. This thing, this uh, a word that is translated assure, its most basic meaning is to just convince or to persuade. So it says here that little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but indeed in truth. We will know by this that we are of the truth and will assure or will convince or will persuade our heart before him. Now notice where this persuasion takes place. It's before him, before God, before the Father. We spend most of our time trying to persuade ourselves of our nature and status as if we were independent from the Father because we want to get right before we get with him. But that's what the beauty is uh, of the new covenant, is that our transformation is designed not to take place so that we can come to the Father. Our, our transformation is designed to take place as we are in the presence of the Father. We're already in. That's why the new covenant in Hebrews chapter 8 finishes with uh, that he'll have mercy on our transgressions and our sins and lawless deeds he'll remember no more. So we're already in relationship. The big reason that we're not convinced of that and that we have a hard time letting go in our heart is because we, we think our relationship is hinging on getting those things right. Jesus made those things right. And he rose and drew us into the presence of the Father. One of my favorite verses is in John chapter 14. And in, in John 14, 20, Jesus says, in that day, and the day he's talking about is after the Holy Spirit's been poured out and is living in us and with us forever, and after the, the revelation that the Spirit brings of the Father and of the Son is, is available to the earth, he says, in that day you will know that I am in my Father. Nobody disagrees with that, or almost nobody. But in the same breath, he says, you're in me, and I'm in you. And so as this question filtered into my heart, why, if God forgets, why can't I? Well, it's because we've honestly not come to believe that he's forgiven us. We've honestly not come to position ourselves and to see ourselves before him. So I'm going to move ahead to just one more verse and close out with that one. And it's a little bit of a long section, but it's in the next chapter of 1 John. And it starts with uh, these familiar words, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. This, this God that we are in the midst of, this God that we are in, in the presence of in Christ, is by nature love. And so if we're going to believe in him, we're not just going to believe in a, in a redemptive narrative about how he sent his son uh, and his son paid the price for us, or we're not going to believe just by reading the Gospels and seeing Jesus. We're going to have to eventually come to the point where we understand that not even really just in spite of, but just because of who God is, not in spite of our sins, but because of who God is at his core nature, he simply loves you and he loves me. And so he has made enormous provision, perfect provision in Christ, in the new covenant to love us the way he's always loved us. And to be able to manifest that love as a father towards a son or towards a daughter. So as it goes on down here, it talks about God abiding in us and that love. You know, we love because he first loved us and all this stuff. But to kind of keep it short, you can read these two chapters, three and four in First John and get this whole, whole thing. It, it, verse 15, it says, And whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So have you done that? Have I done that? Yes, I have. And so there's a, there's a truth associated with that that we need to agree with, and that is that we abide in him. We have come to know, and this is the key, we have come to know and have believed the love that God has for us. I would venture to say that anybody that would take the time to watch this has, has come to know that God loves them. 
but I would also say that there's going to be some people watching this that haven't come to grips with the believing of it. Because every day, almost, we're confronted with something that speaks against this intimate acceptance, this familiar love, this affection, really, that the Father has towards us. Uh, it, it's either a sin that, that, that crops up again, or we'll have some doubt, or we'll react selfishly, or there's any number of things. Or just wake up in a fog and just feel like we're alone. Well, when you feel like you're alone, I heard something wonderful the other day. Uh, I, think was, I think it was just last night as I was thinking about this and listening to a couple of videos. Said this, it says, when you feel like you're alone, realize that the smallest group you'll ever be in is four. I thought that was awesome. Because, hey, I'm, I'm like you. I have a chance to feel like I'm stuck and alone on this situation. But we are in the midst of a triune God. We are in Christ. The Holy Spirit is in us and with us. And the Father has made his abode in us, according to John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And so the smallest group we'll ever be in is the group of us and our precious Father, Jesus the Son and the Word of the Father, and the Holy Spirit of them. And so I, uh, I think this issue of knowing and believing is at the core of this. So what do we do? Well, it says here, uh, by this, love is perfected within us if we love one another. So that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that the scripture in just a minute says that the way to understand and embrace our forgiveness and the fact that God forgives, cleanses, and doesn't remember our sin anymore is to believe that we're loved and then to love other people. But this is not an impossible task because we love because he first loved us. So everybody that is within earshot of what I'm saying. God loves you. And that very act deposits in you love that you can use for the people around you, that you can share with them, that you can love them with. Look what it says. It says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother. Now, when we get to the word commandment, we start conjuring up all sorts of other things. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then here in John, where is it at? I got lost here. The commandment is that we simply love Jesus and that we love our brothers. So I think if we're having a hard time believing in the love that God has for us, we're having a hard time shaking off the sense of guilt and shame and condemnation of our own stuff. Just, just make it a point to look around you and breathe a prayer to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, let me love someone just with a little tiny act of love. And in doing so, you're going to give the Holy Spirit an immediate evidence to persuade you that you, A, are out from God, that you belong to him, and that your whole existence, including the confusing existence of today, is literally something that flows out of God, out of his heart, out of his love for you. And you'll be able to persuade yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit that I really am forgiven and God really has forgotten. I hope this blesses you. Um, I thought it was a precious question and I know that it's so easy to struggle with that. Let me just assure you again, Jesus has done everything necessary so that you can experience the full unhindered love of the father and know it. So I, I encourage you to, Come to know and to believe the love God has for you. God bless you guys.